Hey, 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 welcome to the Sports Reverends Podcast. My name is Dan Chandran. I'm joined with my other sports reverend, Drew Martin, and also my big bro, the coach, who's coach us all. I'm a minister right in downtown Toronto. Drew's the minister in Selkirk, Manitoba. Yeah, you're going to have to Google, Google where that is. And the coach, he's coached us all. And he's coached us to having semi-decent talent. So he must be a decent coach. And uh, we're here. We're here basically to share uh, about sports and challenge what the sports, the mainstream sports media says. Because we want truth. And uh, that's what we're about. So, Coach, why don't you give us the rundown for the show? All right, all right. Uh, we were talking about Leafs and the Oilers, unfortunately. Uh, we'll be talking a bit about the Jays, NBA playoffs. Uh, we have a nice little fun segment, He Said What? Uh, and then we'll be have a nice discussion, uh, a quick discussion about uh, mainstream media standards that are replacing biblical values. Uh, so let's um, head to our first commercial. Which is me, TrainToInvest.com. TrainToInvest, uh, we are a Christian-based company looking to teach you on how to trade in the stock market, how to plan for your retirement, generate some returns that are going to outsize those versus your broker. Uh, if you want to learn how to trade on your own, be financially free, and uh, start living life the real way, visit us at www.TrainToInvest.com train the number two invest.com download our ebook check us out ask us questions love the engagement again www.train the number two invest.com um looking at our first topic here i know drew was very hesitant last time <laughs> to talk about these guys and i think he did something right lead us away drew like how do you feel i, I don't want to touch it i don't want to talk about it uh, it worked. They played great. Austin Matthews, Mitch Marner, all got on the board. Big uh, shutout for Jack Campbell. Um, they just need to keep doing what they're doing. Play with the urgency. Like they looked on a whole. They looked like a team on a whole other level than the Lightning. Uh, the Lightning had no chance. Um, and I can't tell you what I liked more: the Leafs winning or the Bruins losing. But it's a tie. But yeah, I don't know what they're going to do in their next game. I'm going in the same way, cautiously optimistic. Dan, what was the vibe around Toronto downtown when you're working today? It's uh, about the Leafs. The buzz is like no other when it comes to the Leafs in Toronto. It is crazy. It's definitely Leafs craze all the time. I think what has really sparked people is the many interviews of Tampa Bay fans here in Toronto. Uh, they have been outright obnoxious, these Tampa Bay fans, saying, oh, yeah, this, this series is done in four games. Tampa Bay is going to sweep these guys. These guys haven't won in forever. And this and that. So it's, it was, I think it's pretty satisfying for Leafs fans, I think, to, to, to win the way they did. So, so st from start to finish, winning every category. So, hey, you never know. You never know. Taking it to the back-to-back -back champs, pretty good. Yeah, I think um, it's this is exactly what they needed to start their playoff run. Uh, any team coming into a big market like this with so much expectation and so much external pressure needed to come out with a big statement win. And I, and I think they did that. And I think you said they won every aspect of the game. They played really well. And I think they just kicked uh, Tampa Bay in the teeth. Um We'll see what happens in Game Two. If they can, if they can manage to go two and zero heading to Tampa Bay, that's a that's a big gap to overcome. But the um, the the game the game they really set the tone. But the game took a turn. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know if you guys actually watched the game, but there was a big five minute major penalty by the Leafs in the first period. When they killed off that penalty, big time. The momentum was all on their side, because if Tampa Bay takes advantage of five minutes. And on a major penalty, they can score as many goals as they want on the power play. Yeah. The guy can't come out. Um, but killing that penalty, the Leafs have had the best penalty kill all year. And uh, they really 
showed that they're not afraid of playing rough and tumble ho- hockey, which is what you need to do to beat a team like Tampa Bay. Take the game to them, even play a little risky. I don't like the hit by Kyle Clifford, but it really yeah. did set the tone Oof. for the rest of the game. Yeah, those are those are big momentum swings. Um, I was luckily enough, I was at the Jays game that night, so I missed that, but um, saw the saw the the highlights after, and uh, it was quite the show, quite the show. Uh, looking at the Oilers, lost in a bit of a squeaker. For initial thoughts, Drew. They stink. The Oilers stink. I told you the the, the playoffs hockey comes down to goaltending, and Mike Smith is not a like he's old and he stinks and he gave that game away in uh past the puck right in front of the net to the kings and they took advantage the kings have more playoff experience than any players on the oilers so i expect i expect this to be a long series with the kings and the kings might pull it out they've got so much experience they've got anze kopitar jonathan quick all the guys the one cups for la um the oilers yeah I, i don't expect them i fully expect calgary to make it out of their their uh, round, but Edmonton, I'm not sure. Yeah, if quick if right. quick gets hot too, it's definitely done done for the Oilers. So yeah, yeah, no, totally agree with you guys. And and you're right, playoff hockey comes down to who can execute and who's got a good who's got the best goaltending. We've seen that year in year out. Like, and it's funny because like you think of, you think of the Leafs and you think uh, all the firepower that they have. Like you said, they are a strong defensive club, right? best part penalty kill that's a good sign of, of your team and their ability to to control the game right and they're the Oilers, most yeah different they're the most shorthanded goals all year so yeah. they can even take a disadvantage and turn it around so and that's the benefit of having uh those those players on the team um being able to flip through that let's take a look at switching a bit of gears here uh the jays how have they looked in your eyes drew well, they look they've looked good, and and something people have to take into consideration is that like you're not going to win every game in baseball. Yeah, um, it's just not going to happen. The best teams are going to win a third of games. The worst teams are going to lose, or They'll win the worst teams are going to win a third. Best teams yeah. are going to lose a third. Uh, so uh, this series against the Yankees will be the first one that they've lost, I think the first yeah. series. Uh, so they're still looking good and their schedule is significantly harder early in the year than it is on the back half. So like I heard uh, one of the, re- one of the reporters say like, even if they got to the end of May at 500, like they'd be looking pretty good and they're on track to be well above that. Yeah. Uh, I was at the Jays game uh, last night and uh, it was, it was a bit of a smaller crowd, and I think that's due to the, the hockey game, obviously. But um, it was a close game throughout. It was super close. Uh, Bo Bichette was on fire, and he just looked he looked really strong. Vladdy had some good swings out there, but, you know, couldn't knock one out of the park. But this is a good team. Dan, what has been kind of your initial takeaways from this? You've watched a few more games than I have and uh, went to bobblehead night on the Friday? Yes, I did. I got my... Boba Shet Bobblehead right here actually. Hello, hello. And uh, he uh Boba Shet finally found his bat but now has lost his glove. And um even tonight made a couple blunders and, and Manoa pitched another dime and now they got pretty much they're ending up getting whooped tonight. Uh initial thought is that absolutely they have the hardest schedule out of all these good teams to start the year, so it's going to look really good by the end of the year. I think it's good to get this, uh, to get battle tested right away as well, because then they can make some changes if they think they need any uh, mid season here. And overall, you know, I think top to bottom from our from our lineup of, of hitters uh, to our pitching, even our pitching rotation, everything is so solid. I don't really see a giant weak spot. So. And and you have to remember we're doing this without Teoscar for the last two weeks as well. True, yeah. true. Like Teoscar's Teoscar's one of the best bats in our lineup. I think he's second to Vladdy, um, yep. best bats in our lineup. If you replace Tapia with Teoscar for the last two weeks, there's no way we're getting held to one or two runs every game. Yeah. The 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 difference having Teoscar in there 
is now they can pitch around Vladdy. Right. They don't have Correct. to give Vladdy pitches to hit. Right. Yeah. When right. they put Teoscar right behind Vladdy, they have to pitch to him because they don't want to pitch to Teoscar. So that's yeah. the big difference and uh, why I think they've been in these close games, lo- close low scoring games. Yeah. Um, yeah, but they'll they're going to be one of the top scoring teams in the league by the end of the year for sure. Oh, 100 percent. I think Dan, you're 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 hit the nail on the head here. You'd rather have the tough games to start off with, get battle tested, um, because October's coming up quicker than we think, right? And uh, it's already we're already in May, and it's just feel like these years just flying by. And you'd rather be have your team ready to go, peaking at the right time instead of just trying to scramble through and get through it all, uh, right before playoffs. And I think that that applies to a lot of other sports as well, right? But um, yeah, I, and Drew. You're right. Best team's going to lose a third of the games. Worst team's going to win a third of the games. It's really about how many series can you win. And uh, for this being the first series they've lost all year, I think rationally everybody's quite happy. And uh, looking forward to seeing what they can do uh, rest of the way. I just, because I just a lot hope of games coming up. Yeah, I just hope that they don't get swept because we're going to Bobblehead night. To- we're going to the Star Wars night tomorrow. We're going to get that... Uh... Uh, Chewbacca big. Why am I shushing? I'm taking a day off from work, guys. So. Oh yeah. Just saying. Oh, Just saying. I see. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, that's okay. That's okay. Uh, great Jay's update. Love that. Love love that baseball's back and it's a fun thing to go do, even if you're not really into it. I went with my workmates from Bison. Uh, I think myself and my boss's boss, the only one's ever been to a game before. <laughs> but I think uh, out of the 15 people, everybody had a good time. So I think baseball is one of the best sports to watch live. Mm-hmm. It it might be boring on TV, whatever, but like to watch it live. Oh yeah. There's nothing like a, the experience of a baseball game. Yeah, absolutely. Agreed. Absolutely. Uh, NBA playoffs. Man, we're already in the second round. It's crazy. It's flying. Uh, Dan, what? We give us give us your thoughts on uh, Buck Celtics first. Let's go with that. Man, I really thought um, Bucks beating the Celtics with their full lineup uh, without Chris Middleton in game one with all the things that went wrong for them. Um, I really thought it was like the breaking of their spirit. But um, but I was wrong because they came back tonight, Boston, and just, just laid the wood down without Marcus Smart. And, and they're in this series. This series is going to go six, seven games. And uh, I really think Giannis is still the most dominant player of the NBA today. So I think they're going to pull it out. But, man, this is going to be tough without Chris Middleton. That's all I'll say. Yeah. Um, did you manage to catch any of the uh, playoff games coming into this week? Uh, no, but I can, like, the old adage of defense wins championships, right? And, Absolutely. Uh, who co- who coached you on that? I don't know. Some <laughs> some coach told me that. But uh, if if the Celtics can hold the Bucks to this low score without yeah. their best defensive player, um, it could be a long series for the Bucks as well. Yeah, I uh, game one I think surprised everybody. No one really expected them to to blow like that. But I think game two, you see the Celtics coming back and uh, Tatum and Brown are just a, a crazy combo. It's oh, really yeah. interesting to think that you know beginning of the year they're talking about. Let's blow this up. Let's trade uh, Brown and uh, figure it out. And it's like that. That was a, that's a that was a really weird take that everybody just kind of jumped into. They started so um, slow though, so slow. Pardon? They started so slow. Yeah, and that's. I mean, and I, I think it, it's it's be different if they started slow every year. True. Right. It's new coach I mean, and all. We like the panic. And the media likes to go on about all sorts of things, but like, it's all about ratings. The team was built solidly. I mean, until Robert Williams went down, so they had a lot of good. They have a lot of good pieces, right? So, uh, Lowry taking on the Embiidless Seventy Sixers. Lowry was out too. Yeah. So, but I mean, oh, what a dumb series. Yeah, it just sucks for the Raptors. Um, the sense that. Embiid's not there, but if he's back for games three and four, you never know. It'll be a good series. Uh, Lowry might be back as well, so I think the Heat are just too deep, um, especially with Oladipo playing. Like 
the way he guards James Harden is just that's the Oladipo of old is what I saw and um, even the games where Jimmy Butler was out in the first round I saw Oladipo being that good this Heat team is for real I'd be scared to be I would be scared to play the Heat right now yeah absolutely um, James Harden doesn't look good no no he, he old I don't know he's good I said he just looks old yeah I mean he's 30 something he's only 32 33 right if that if and that he, he just looks either he's disinterested or he just is just declined significant or both or both or both. Or he's has a nagging injury they say his hamstring has been nagging him but that's been since now two been? years so since he got chubby well i mean let's be honest if we all dropped 30 pounds our joints would be much happier so that same applies to James Harden there. Uh, I think I think I think you're right. Miami is going to win this one. Bam and Giannis are really the only two guys in the East who can guard Embiid. Well, I don't know about Bam. I don't know. About he's Bam. got the he's got the strength, and he's going to just go at him every at every possession. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. I think Embiid's going to get his regardless. Um, yeah. He's played. He has. He's had an MVP year, and he's a great player. But you know, I, there's not enough there. Tyrese Maxey can't be your no. second guy, right? And Tyler Hero just won Sixth Man of the Year. Yeah, that's pretty cool too. Yeah, so good for him. Uh, another another good find by the scouting department for sure. Yeah. Uh, let's flip to uh, Jazz. Not Jazz. Dallas and uh, our good friend Chris Paul. Wow. Want me to go first again? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Luca dropped forty plus points and still lost. Like Phoenix is Phoenix is also a championship caliber team. Chris Paul, as much as I dislike him, is that engine that keeps going. And with the weapon of Booker and all those other shooters, and even Aiton being a force down there, like Luca can't do it all. It's just impossible. So I think the series does go maybe five or six. But Phoenix is just too strong, I think. Unless Spencer Dinwiddie somehow resurrects himself, but that's it. Do you think there was sort of a better chance with with Kristaps in the yeah, lineup? Absolutely, I do. If if he's healthy, that's the thing. Right? If he's healthy, yeah. but absolutely, I think Kristaps Porzingis. I'm pretty high on him when he's healthy. He's a, a top big man, and he can spread the floor and that force in the paint. So. Yeah, um, I don't know. Chris Paul does Chris Paul things, but until he wins something, I don't know. I'm he's uh, he's he's overrated in my opinion. He's, so, but the Heat do look legit. Yeah, the Suns, the Suns. Yeah, sorry, the Suns. Sorry, the Suns do look legit. And then uh, last one up top here, Golden State and Memphis. Actually, Where's... the one. <laughs> this is the one game I did watch. Nice. There you go. And I thought it was very entertaining. Uh, John Morant is Man. for real. Yeah. Um, little questionable decision making down like that last that last stretch. I don't probably could have got something a little more high percentage. Probably could have gone two for one, pushed the floor mm -hmm. a little bit. Yep. Good call. Um, Good call. But these Golden State Warriors are proving that they have championship DNA, right? <laughs> uh, that's what Steph said after the game. Clay hitting that clutch shot Ooh. down the stretch. Yeah. Just ice in his veins, right? I think Absolutely. he got a piece it's, of that last John Morant shot too. So Yeah. And and just like guys that it doesn't matter what kind of cold stretch they're in, when it comes down to it, they're gonna they still have the confidence to to hit the big shots. I think Golden State's the team to team, team to beat in the West and and probably for the championship this year. I like it. Well, what did you think, Dan? Yeah, I I, I like that take, Drew. Um with Draymond getting that questionable flagrant too, I think that yeah, was that kind didn't of look like much. I, I was going to ask about that. Definitely a reputation call, I would say. Um, there's no way that was excessively force used use of force and then pull them. Whatever, it's just a reputation call. the The finality of it all is that they beat them without Draymond Green, and they had maybe six open threes. That uh, Stephen spoke four of them at the last couple minutes. 
and they're still able to pull it out. And that's like a backbreaker. Mark Mark Glor, our volleyball coach, would say you got to step on the neck of your team of the other team to to put them out. And this is what happened. I I told one of my new interns at uh, CITC that he's a big big John Morant fan, and I told him they're getting swept, and I'm sticking with it. That was a very bold call. Um, I think if you were a neutral and you had to watch a basketball game for the first time ever. This would be a great game to watch. Up and down, a lot of scoring, good defense. Aside from the Draymond Green business, um, you got old stars, new stars, a lot of a lot of mix coming in. And um, I hope this goes seven, just to get some seven great games out of it. Um, but I'm with you, Drew. I think Golden State will be coming out of the West because um, they they match up with with Phoenix really well, right? And I don't think, you know, you put you put Clay on on, on uh, Chris Paul. That's going to cause some issue. Yeah. Oh yeah. And the motion offense that Golden State, yeah. like, they just never stop moving. No. Yeah. And all these guys are just master cutters. Yeah. Like it's, even it's, even I love watching Gary Payton uh, so, yeah. play. Put like, Gary just Payton energy on Chris all Paul. day. Cool. Yeah. 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 The, the yeah, fact that they're playing cool. this high level of defense is they're deadly. They're deadly. They're peaking at the right time. Can They're I, peaking at the right time. I got like a three-second thing to show you guys. A little fun for NBA. I want you guys to rate this fit, okay? Um, oh. And uh, I guess I don't know if you guys can see this. Do you have your phones at all? I'll show it on YouTube. But you can check the Instagram of the Sports Reverence. I'll, try, I'll put the picture up for everyone here on YouTube here. And uh, rate this fit from Russell... Westbrook. Oh, the Met Gala one. The Met Gala, and he's he skirted up once more, and um, and uh, look at both pictures. Okay, there's two pictures I have there. Let's keep clicking through this story. Look, I think Russell Westbrook needs to. <laughs> the quicker oats is nice. I, yes. I think Russell Westbrook needs to focus more on his jump shot and his ability to play basketball. Than he does about being a celebrity. Like, <laughs> he looks like the Quaker Oats thing is, is Here, here's genius. The Quaker Oats I love whoever did YouTube. that. Yeah, this is so good. And, you know, I, I just, you see something like this, and you got to really question, like, how much do you want to play basketball? <laughs> right? Like, you can do all this stuff when you're retired. And I'm not saying you can't have any sort of hobbies outside of work. But, like, this, you put a lot of thought into this. Do you not think you can put a lot of thought into just pulling your elbow in a little bit and using your wrist from the free throw line when you do a jumper? I don't know. It just seems to me you could shoot a thousand free throws and get better. But the, um, the question posed on Instagram, is he a better dresser or is he a better shooter? I voted dresser. So Drew, he's a both, terrible they're both bad. <laughs> <laughs> just awful. All right, I can't, I can't look at this I anymore. Think, He's almost as bad as Justin Bieber. <laughs> With that giant suit. With the giant suit. <laughs> Jeez. Well, on that note, let's jump onto some actually good clothes. Drew, take it away. Yeah, one bone. I'm not wearing a one bone today. <gasps> I usually, actually, you know what? I'm wearing one underneath my sweater. There so is. I am, one bone shirts are the most comfortable shirts you'll ever wear. They start making, making pants now. Super comfortable. The sweaters are great. Uh, if you're a big guy, if you're a small guy, any size, they have a shirt for you. Um, no more showing your belly when you raise your arms. Uh, you're free to worship Jesus however you feel like it. Uh, that was my concern, and they've fixed it. So thank you, One Bone. Uh, if you go to their web, if you go check them out, use the code SPORTSREVS15, you get 15% off your first order. SPORTSREVS15, uh, check them out, look good, feel good. We all win. Love it. Ooh. Love it. Uh, this is a fun segment. We got He Said What, led by our, our good buddy here, Dan. Yes, I love this segment. Okay, so He Said What. Basically, I'm going to ask these these uh, these guys here. 
uh, some questions and the question basically, no, it's not questions. They're actually statements that we've either made as the sports reverence throughout our show, through our new season. We're on episode 12. Um, so it's, it's either, it's all from the new season, three episodes, the 12 episodes. If they, if, if we have said it or if it was said by some other sports reporter. Okay. And then if they get bonus points, if they can guess who the person is that said it as well. So you guys can help me keep track and um who's gonna go first is the th- is the thing so you both get to answer i think, I think drew's the reigning champ so he should go first okay yeah, i win i win that's just what i do he wins okay so this, I, I, this is what i'm gonna do i'm not even gonna i was gonna use a voice changer but forget that i'm just gonna read it okay question or statement one okay so the question for this statement was posed was should this game between bill belichick and the Patriots and Tom Brady and the Buccaneers be the most ante- anticipated regular season game in NFL history. And this is the response from someone. No, it's going to be a terrible game. The Bucks are just far a far superior team than most teams in the NFL. This is sort of a tired storyline. Belichick and Brady. I didn't want to acknowledge it either. I fought against this a lot last year. That Belichick was doing a better job. But Brady... Brady's not human. I probably won't even watch this game. The Bucks are just too good. I said that. Drew says no. he says that. Coach? It's not a sports reverend. Do you have a guess of who? Uh, I'll go with I'll go with uh, Colin Coward. Okay, and the answer is <laughs> Drew Martin with the double points Whoa. said it, and he also said it. He called it that. He said it. All right, here we go. Number two here. Okay, this is the coach. You get a start. I mean, so the the topic was on Brian Flores, and the response was this. My thoughts go to why did he get fired? He was with the Dolphins for three years. Had a losing record, never made the playoffs. If you look at the Dolphins roster, they should have made the playoffs this year. They lost to the Jaguars, which knocked them out of the playoffs. And there were coaches that were fired this season for winning records. Quote. That was the quote. Uh, I'm going to go with not a sports reverend. Ooh, okay. Drew Martin. I feel like I said that one too. Drew Martin said that one too. Final answer, lock it in. Yeah. Drew Martin with the double. No. Double call. No way. I'm like, there's no way he puts two of my quotes back to back. I know. It's trying to be so <laughs> tricky. Way to go. Way to go. Okay, Drew, you I can go first game. on this one. All right, Drew's up 4 nothing, Coach. Yeah, this is not good. Coach, you this play to win with the, the ball game. ball in hand. You play to win the game. Okay, number three. This topic was on Kyrie Irving. When Russia bombed Ukraine, I thought Kyrie Irving is, wasn't going to show up to work. I think Kyrie Irving should retire. I think he should announce his retirement today. Not a sports rev. Not a sports reverend. Uh, uh, gonna, hey, wait, wait, it's Drew. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, Minus seven. seven. Stephen Just A. Kidding. Smith. <laughs> Stephen A. Smith. Both are Stephen A. Smith. <laughs> Both are correct. <laughs> Double. Thank you, Joel. You're welcome. Hey, you guys. <laughs> Killer. Killer. Okay. I'll only four. take one on that one. I'll take one. No, I, wouldn't no, no, said, no. I wouldn't have said Stephen A. Smith. Okay. That's honesty. Who would you have said that? I don't know. It's honesty. That's what it is. Okay. Joel, you're next. What, right. what? There's no precursor to this. This is just the quote. What does politi- politically correct mean? If you're fat, don't ask me if you're fat because I'm going to tell you the truth. You're fat. Ooh. That's a tough one. I'm going to say... I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Drew on this one. Sports Reverend Drew. I'm going to go with Jason Whitlock. Drew oh, says Jason Whitlock. You both are incorrect. That <sighs> was the real one, the Charles Barkley. 
Ah, the round I knew it was mound someone of who's... rebound. Oh, that's fair. That's yes. fair. I knew it was a, a truth bomb kind of guy. Yes. Yes. Okay. Last one here, guys. Okay. All right. So I've won. Yeah, there's literally no way chance for me to come back. So. <laughs> well. Yeah. Yeah. That's mathematical. Five to two. Yeah. That's maths for you. Actually. No. There is a way for oh. you to come back because oh. there's multiple people in this quote. Ooh. Oh. There we go. So you can tie. You can tie. Here we go. There's no precursor. There's this, the start of the quote. We are talking about facts and not feelings. I could feel like I'm a dog that wants to make love to a tree. Second person says, you got to get married first. First person says, the reality is I could feel that way. You do have a right to feel that way, what you feel. But we have we are talking about facts. And the facts are that I am not a dog. I won't marry or make love to a tree. There is a biological male body and a biological female body. There is no logical explanation that you can tell me that Leah Thomas, who is a biological man, can compete against biological women and win. And that is considered a true and and is that is considered a true win and is to be celebrated. Who gets to go first? I'll let you go first. I think this is Joel and Dan. I think it's I know it's me. And I think it is, yeah, I think it's Dan too. I'm going, I'm going with that. You guys are half correct. Oh, is it me? It is Drew. Joel and Drew. Did I say you got to get married first? <laughs> yes. yes, he did. <laughs> and it was gold. It I don't remember gold. saying that. Yeah, yeah, it's true. You did. You didn't put yourself in a single one of these quotes. I was trying to mess you guys up. So... Well, you messed me up, that's for sure. The winner of the game is the sports reverend, Drew Martin. Reverend Drew. All right. Way to go, boys. Way to go. I love that segment. It's a lot of fun. I'm going to use the voice changer next time. What's next? There. You're next. Oh, it's me. All right, well... Let's talk about Urban Hope. Urban Hope is near and dear to my heart. It's the mentorship program that I got the opportunity to start and continue. And we just had eight summer grants to hire interns, all students, some from university, some from high school. And uh, the coach here is going to be starting up a basketball program as well called the Urban Hope Elite. And we're going to have a lot of fun coaching these kids and the way coach coaches is for on the court and off the court uh, skills, life skills, and challenges them to pursue their best. If you want to be a part of donating and, and helping out Urban Hope, it is a charity charitable organization. You will get a tax receipt for it. You can check out www.thesportsreverence.com slash sponsors. Check out sportsreverence.com slash sponsors. Thanks for all your help and donations. All right. Um, this is a interesting topic. Um, we should. Truth is under attack, and really, and and this is not only a biblical thing, but just truth in general is under attack um, from the mainstream media. You know, there's there's a lot of standards that you know North America was built on, it, and fortunately, they're built on the Bible. And these standards in society are being cut down and the wrong things are being elevated as, as good. So here's a quick example. Uh, Brittany Grenier, WNBA player, very famous for the WNBA, uh, one of the faces of the, the league, plays in Russia. Uh, when the war broke out with Ukraine, it was found out that she had tried to bring hashish oil into the country, which is illegal and she was arrested um initially no one said anything because they didn't want to upset any u.s russia relations more recently uh apparently the government saying she was the u.s government has said that she was uh arrested wrongly and so now they're going to be a bigger push from the u.s government to get her freed WNBA came out and said we're going to put a number on the court 
Uh, we're gonna. She's a face of the league. We're gonna make sure she gets her f- full paid salary, and we're just gonna take care of Brittany. I haven't seen any sort of professional league in North America protect a criminal so badly. What does that kind of say? I, I'm. I'm. I'll start with you, maybe Dan or or Drew, if whoever wants to go first. But like, what does that say for the state of? what society it is and what is it celebrates. Yeah. It, it, Go ahead. It's, it's so it's, it's pick and choose. It's, it's whatever side of the, the aisle you're on, whether you get celebrated or demonized, right? Like, because we saw it clearly with protests, it depends what protest you're at, whether you're allowed to do it or whether you should just shut up. Right. According to the media, um, like even with civil disobedience, which I don't know if this would be considered that, right? Like, but like if you're, if, like we saw it with the the truckers, right? If you're, hmm. if you're on if you're on board with that, you could lose your job. You can lose, like you don't deserve any of that. People say, uh, this just makes no sense to me. Like it, it's, it, yeah, it, it's against the rules and or against the law, and she obviously knew that going in. So I don't know. I don't know what the WNBA is trying to prove here other than the fact that, yeah, we already knew you were left leaning. So now we know even more. Dan, what do you think? Yeah, for me, it shows that, you know, the standards of these, basically these people are all elites, right? They're, they have money. They're, they're popular. Uh, The standards of these people are, are really they're purely selfish it's all about them that they should be able to get what they want when they want and whatever narrative that fits them and all these with all that whatever they fight for let's say they're fighting for um for social justice for for black lives okay uh they're all quoting someone like martin luther king jr they're quoting all these things about you know um um you know equality and all those good things but they don't even really believe the standards and what martin luther king jr relies on the most which is his relationship with god you know here's some quotes you don't hear from martin luther king jr that i just pulled up he says this i would urge you to give priority to the search for god allow his spirit to permeate your being if you do not have a deep and patient faith in god you'll be powerless to face the delays disappointments and vicissitudes that inevitably come vicissitudes is basically the the compromises and challenges that come ahead and um uh that do you see any of these uh nba players wmb players all these um hollywood stars they, do they even think about what the the heart and the where martin luther king jr was coming from when he started to share any of his other things i have one more quote from martin luther king jr sure. he says by opening our lives to god in christ we become new creatures this experience which jesus spoke of as the new birth is essential if we are to be transformed non-conformists only through an inner spiritual transformation do we gain the strength to fight vigorously the evils of the world in a humble and loving spirit. And that's the heartbeat of what Martin Luther King Jr. represented. And, and none of these guys, people, are all about that. And that's the standards that we got to start going back to instead of just what's convenient to us. Yeah, I think you, you both are absolutely correct. Um... And you make some really good points. And I think another easy example that isn't necessarily tied to sports is Elon Musk buying Twitter. Big right? time. Um, you talk about free speech and freedom of speech. And the only thing that's come out of Elon buying Twitter is, oh, white guy con- you know, is going to control the narrative. Well, how? He literally said, I'm buying it so that freedom of speech can exist, whether you like it or not. I mean, look at the mask mandates, look at vaccinations, all these, all these people who said, you know, this is the only way to go. You have to be open to mandates. You have to be open to government telling you things. You gotta be open to transgender and making sure everybody feels okay. And X, Y, Z, where are they now? Like what happened to LeBron in the bubble and he was preaching social justice and all that kind of stuff. But now that his team sucks, he's gone quiet. 
I think I think it's the consistency is is the problem. The consistency of the message, the consistency of the logic. And granted, different different belief systems across Christianity can be a little obtuse, we'll say. But if you base everything in the Bible, the Bible is consistent all the way through, right? So we have to bring it back to what is the heart of, like you said, Dan, what is the heart of the message? Um, how do you guys navigate this conversation with an unbeliever? Like, how would you guys, you know, talk about changes in, in this, the norms versus holding true to your beliefs? It's, it's super hard because, uh, the attack on truth is the attack on right and wrong, good and evil, right? Like the, in the world, those lines are so blurred now that, all like all evil is called good all good is called evil like and we're warned about this all throughout the new testament right this is mm -hmm. what's going to happen we shouldn't be shocked by this but i think it's still hard to navigate how to um share your faith and and it's really coming down to um <clears throat> we're being silenced uh or they're attempting to silence us but uh but ultimately we know that jesus is going to overcome all this so we just need to hold true to what we believe and uh that his holy and we believe that his holy spirit can work through even in the darkest darkest areas of everyone's lives um but it's really hard not to become combative and and respond to their it's almost militant towards us mm -hmm. it's really hard not to stand up and fight but i've i've actually been going through a series at church right now on how to respond to our spiritual enemy right and and we're we're given the uh the armor of god right and the right the breastplate of righteousness and the um everything is defensive except for one only one item in that whole list is offensive and that's the the sword of the spirit which is the word of god so when we when we try and combat the enemy like that's what we should use is uh the word of God and what we've been given anything that we have. It's so easy to use our own biases and our own situations to, and that's when we get into trouble with people is when we, when we start to put our own spins on things and our own, mm -hmm. you know, personal convictions and beliefs. But when we go back to the word of God, I think that's where the safest place we can be. That's an, that's an excellent answer, Drew. I'll just add on to that is um, one of the things in my experience is you're, you're probably never going to debate and argue someone into a relationship with God. And uh, the best way in my experience has been just building relationships with a person and letting God do the work from that. And, and nine times out of 10, it's a lot easier to, when someone actually brings their walls down and are, are finally willing to listen, because that's one of the biggest problems when you're arguing with, usually it's people from the left, um, um, it's, they're not even wanting to talk. They don't want to have a conversation because, you know, logic usually outweighs everything. But when you bring that, bring those walls down, you build that relationship and you see, they see the difference in you and the way you live they're open to a conversation and uh, it was a really cool conversation I had with someone who was finally able to say, I can disagree with you, but we can still be friends. And, uh, this was talking about, um, with someone from the LGBTQ plus community. And it was a really great relationship with this person. And, and she even sends her kids to our youth program and all that kind of stuff. And, and, um, I think that's the best way to do it. You be relational, then you let God do the work. Yeah, you guys are reading my minds here. Follow-up follow -up questions like what we can do to encourage others to stand up for their faith and have these conversations, but you guys have nailed it. The one aspect is, you know, making sure you're good by knowing the armor of God and, and knowing and reading and getting into the Word. And the second part was relational um, and, and treating them how Jesus would treat them. And and, and being, being up front, I don't think, I, I mean, I don't think, sorry, I, I know Jesus never hid his faith, but the way he presented it was different to non-believers versus believers, right? And I think 
th- that's, I mean, it's, it sounds so cliche, right? Jesus is the best example. Be like Jesus. But it, it's so, it's so true. And I mean, I've seen it in your guys' lives. I mean, from the little uh, fun kids you used to be to where you guys are now, right? And and how you guys are talking about things and and, and living the way living life the way Jesus would want you guys to live for the most part. Um, you, you, you guys are just nailed on the head. And I love that. And I love that. Um, final words, um, maybe words of encouragement, something to think about. Um, floor is yours. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm just excited for this weekend. I can't hide it. It's finally springtime here in Selkirk. <laughs> We've been waiting for it, so I am encouraged, and I hope everyone is encouraged by the weather outside. But uh, yeah, it, it lifts your it lifts your spirits when the sun's out. I'm you can't you can't hide it. Drew, no one can tell your spirits are lifted with the way you speak, <laughs> man. You're like the most like I'm just pumped up, you know. Dude, I'm a father of three. <laughs> like I'm tired all the time. So hundred <laughs> percent. This is the most you get out of me. That's good, man. That's good. No, I feel you. I'm, I'm about the sun. The vitamin D is good for you. And um, yeah, I'm ex- the final words on, on that topic too is uh, just what we've been speaking from season, the beginning of season three is uh, we want to encourage you guys to write your own headlines, uh, sports media, mainstream sports media, even mainstream media. They're going to tell you all sorts of things, but do your own research, uh, dive into it. Uh, you can even ask us questions if you have some questions. If you want to see where we go for our research and stuff like that, hey, that's what we're about. We'd love to share and love to see you grow as we grow. All right, great pod today, guys. Really appreciate the time and and it's always fun the first half of the show, but really enjoyed your answers for the second half. Uh, Sports Reverends, check us out. Like us on Facebook, Instagram, retweet us, add us, whatever you guys want all social media platforms on YouTube. Make sure you like and subscribe, engage in the comments uh, because A, that helps get our views up and spreads our message a little further. And B, we want to hear from you guys. Uh, I love working at Bison. Not as much as I love interacting with our fans. So uh, make sure you, you send us a message. So that's it for us, guys. Peace. Peace. Peace.